Okay, so this is the un, the official unboxing of my hollow body guitar ordered from Grote in China. Uh, Grote is a manufacturer of uh, J. Terser guitars, among other things, and this was an eBay special. So they're apparently clearing out some inventory guitars. They have some sort of flaw. Um, this one I think has a chip on the headstock. Uh, I've seen ones that are missing the headstock logo or something like that, some manufacturing uh, defect, but it's otherwise a normal guitar. Uh, judging from the pictures I saw, this one, also the um, rosewood on the neck doesn't match the rosewood on the bridge. It's one of those sort of floating Gretsch style sort of old bridges. Anyway, I don't really care too much about that. Uh, I bought this thing as a prop to use in a 50s rock and roll show. So I thought a hollow body guitar would really fit that bill. And for 140 US, as long as the thing isn't an absolute turd, uh, it's still worth it. So this is the official unboxing. The thing came to me like this. Polystyrene wrapped in yellow tape with stickers all over it. Uh, so... I just had to find the sort of uh, seam of exactly how this was wrapped and this eventually uh, surfaced as the way it came uh, packaged. So it's a polystyrene lid into a polystyrene body then totally wrapped up in box binding tape of some sort. So here we go. It's quite a coffin they've made for this thing. Uh, oh, there's somebody's hair. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Ooh. Pretty. Seeing my way through the uh, debris. Don't really want expanded polystyrene all over my house. So I'm trying to be relatively gentle as best as I can unwrap this with one hand. But uh, good job packing it. I mean, this neat little coffin. Um, this is the one thing I, I wasn't in love with, uh, was this style of bridge. Not because there's anything wrong with it, other than I just didn't care for that. But uh, I got outbid on the one that I was after at the very last moment. Some bastard beat me to it. But uh, initial impressions in terms of the packaging are quite satisfied. And uh, I like the inlays. Gotta look at them in the original photos. Uh, some lame fretwork scratched onto the fretboard. I was expecting something like that. Uh, this has binding all the way about the headstock, sure enough. J. Terzer. Uh, The tuners have nice action. I think they have the, the the screws on the side of them, so you can adjust the. Um, uh, adjust the action, like how tight they are, and there we are. It's a lovely little unit, and all of the sort of earmarks of a brand new guitar. It's got little plastic covers and everything. The floating bridge has a piece of foam under it, which I will remove. And it has strings. And it is totally untuned. But anyway, I'll get this thing out and do some sound checks and just see how pleased we are. Already I'm satisfied that it's not a piece of crap. So I'm happy enough. Good stuff. Here's my hollow body. It needs a serious amount of uh, fret leveling and just fret work. The frets are just oh terrible. Anyway, done my taping um, and marker in there again. That's why we like to tape the neck first. Uh, had to do the cutting on the other side of this. Little number. It's not quite long enough to reach all the frets, but it worked so well last time, and you know what, for one fret away, and the rest of the neck is perfectly straight, I'm willing to say there's not going to be a bend in that last inch of neck. So, 
crouch down, bend the thing up onto its edge, and I don't see significant uh, light under one end as I do under either end. So it's good. I did have to tighten the uh, truss rod a tiny bit to get it to be like this, but uh, this will work just fine. So now we hit it with the sandpaper and see what kind of uh, damage there is. What I'm expecting to see is the 13th fret high, it's a 13, 12 or 13, uh, and then there's some more trouble um, higher up on the neck, but right around the 12th fret, 10 to 12, it just, it's just ridiculous, tons of buzzing, and the action is not as low as I want it. Um, I'm not one of those shredder low uh, guys, but there is such a thing as too high for everybody, and this is too high for me. So, just put our handy dandy block on. Few strokes. And we should see all sorts of activity. So, I'm going to catch the light just right. So, we're getting some light spots from the sandpaper, and that's fine. It's hitting the edges in some, hitting the centers in others. So, that's just evidence that this was never leveled properly. They just hammered them in and ground them. Uh, like this guy's low on one side, high on the other side. A couple of high spots in the middle. Anyway, that's the sort of thing we're going for. So I'm going to keep sanding until I get a nice surface. Uh, do as little of the sanding as I can. And then we got to crown everything. You can see by how wide these flat spots are. I've taken a considerable about of material off the fretboard and we still have two low spots so that is uh, 10 and 11 which is basically what I was expecting something similar to that so when I'm playing around that part of the neck I fret out and we get this crappy buzzy effect um, the very highest fret has a low spot on it but that's totally harmless because it's the highest fret, there's nothing else for the thing to hit except maybe the pickup, the strings I mean. Um, so the uh, sanding continues on uh, these two frets until we can get down to that spot in the middle disappearing and then it's just a bit of crowning work to get the rest of the neck up to snuff. So off we go. And I'm also running out of uh, capacity with this sandpaper. It's getting pretty clogged. That's all nickel residue building up on the paper, so I'm sort of running out of a good sanding surface. I don't want to build, like, refresh this thing totally just to finish the job up, but well, whatever it takes, right?